CBS, the Yankees Entertainment and Sports Network. Well, there's the Yankee starter. The game, well, pan down a little bit. There you go. That's the matchup as Kia presents the Wednesday game of the week. It's the New York Yankees against the Seattle Mariners in the second game of a three-game set from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, New York. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Yankees baseball along with David Cohn and Al Leiter. I'm Michael Case. So the Yankees were trailing 3 nothing yesterday against Felix Hernandez, and you don't feel really good about things. Then they whittled it to 3-1, then they got to the bullpen, and then Robinson Cano came up. Nice setup, Michael. <laughs> That's exactly what happened in the seventh inning with one out. Robinson Cano, as Michael just said, with first and second on a 2-2 slider. Robbie thought maybe he got it. Michael Saunders makes a nice effort. Double off the wall. An intentional walk to Vernon Wells, and Curtis Granderson got a walk. Lyle Overbank smokes a line drive to center field, scoring Cano and making it an eventual 4-3 Yankee win. An exciting game for the Yankees last night. All right, let's take a look at the New York Lottery pitching matchup. Phil Hughes goes for the Yankees, 2-2, two 4.43. And, two, and Hasashi Iwakuma will go for the Mariners, 4-1, 1.74. 1, 1 David, Phil Hughes pitching better than he did earlier in the season. Last time out, he got the win against Kansas City, but wasn't at his best. Yeah, he wasn't really at his best. He actually came into this game with a 22-inning homerless streak going, and that was broken up by Dyson early in this ball game. Everybody knows Phil Hughes is a fly ball pitcher. The problem is, is when those fly balls start getting over your outfielders' heads, that's when the damage gets done. But he did hang in there and get the win, even though he did give up a couple of home runs as Mustaka shot him there. But he was still much better than those first two starts of the year. He's got to be good tonight because Iwakuma can pitch. 32 years old, second in the big leagues, third in ERA in the American League, second in opponent's batting average against, on base percentage first against, and opponent's slugging percentage first as well. He's going to be tough. If it's a close game, the Yankees know it's going to be tough for the opponent because that man jogs in. Yesterday, he did the job again. In his last year, he's been perfect. How's that possible? Al Leiter will try to explain next. One last night, 4-3, to three, and Mariano Rivera was on the mound to close it out. He's 16 for 16 in save opportunities. It's an amazing start to this, his final season. That's out later on Michael K. David Cohn will rejoin us in just a moment. He's 43 years old. He's almost as old as you. Can you believe he's doing this? Thanks. Yeah. Uh, no. You know, you th yes and no. I mean, he's had such a special pitch. And I'm looking at this right here, Kendrick Morales. I know it's 91. Once upon a time, he threw 95. Still has late action. Look at this here on this beautiful yes view. 
the rotation of that, the ball cutting in on his hands. And it's not only a left-hander, Michael, it's a right-hander. Michael Morris off the end of the bat, breaks the bat. Then he comes inside. The ability to both sides of the plate, his cutter still moving. Impeccable command, the two walks in the 17 innings. This guy's as good as he's ever been. All right, coming up, lineup, first pitch by Phil Hughes and baseball. Yankees and the Mariners next, right here on Yes. USA.com, by Blippi, America's sub shop, by American Airlines, the new American is arriving, and by Honda, visit your Honda dealer today for great deals, only a Honda is a Honda. Well, the Yankees have taken the field, and we're almost ready for baseball here in the Bronx. Beautiful night, there was some threat of rain, but it's been great so far. Here's the Mariners starting lineup. Michael Saunders in center field will lead off. Dustin Ackley in second. Kyle Seeger the third baseman. Kendris Morales at DH. Michael Morrison right. Justin Smoke at first. Raul Ibanez at left. Jesus Montero behind the plate. And Brendan Ryan is the shortstop. He's going to bat ninth. So the Yankee right-hander Phil Hughes is ready. He's two and two. Michael Saunders is ready as well. And let's do it here in the Bronx. First pitch, swung on and missed, and we are on to it. Driven out to left field, gonna be a long run, and there is Granderson. For the first out. Well, let's take a look at Phil Hughes. You mentioned the two and two record. Coming off a rough start, even though he won in Kansas City, 11 6 win by the Yankees. The RA went up because of those six runs at 40, two, 40 and two thirds innings. Nine walks. I like that ratio. Let's take a look at the scatter report brought to you by Tri Honda Dealers. Attacking hitters. He's got the third best first pitch strike ratio in Major League Baseball behind Patrick Corbin of Arizona. And Jake Peavy of the White Sox. Don't get careless. Five of his seven home runs have come here at Yankee Stadium. Throws a lot of fastballs. Hitters know it. Gets a little careless in the zone. And sinking the Mariners in his career. He's done very well against the Mariners, especially in his last four starts dating back to July of 2010. He's got an ERA of 169, 3 and 1 record. 2 0 to Ackley. Now let me expand on one of your points, Al. You said don't get careless. He's a, he's a fly ball guy. Pitching in a ballpark. We see they're giving the roll call at the bleachers, and there's a couple of uh, New York Giants out there, including David Wilson, who's going to be their starting running back. But um, isn't that going to be part of what he does? I mean, a, a fly ball pitcher in this ballpark is going to give up home runs, whether right. they're careful or not. Uh, good question. Uh, da no, David, you're, you'll have an answer on this. When I say careless, he, here's a guy, and I just cited the numbers 70.3% of his first pitches are strikes. 
awesome. That's what you want to do and establish. As a major league pitcher, there are areas in which you try to stay away from. I understand that, Michael. There's a difference between up middle of the plate or on the corners. And even though he accelerates and throws fastballs up in the zone, which is good, higher than high is excellent, but you careless in the zone, even though you throw strikes, middle of the plate eventually will get hit. And while he's a fly ball pitcher because he does elevate, throws the ball up in the zone, yeah, you know, in a place like Yankee Stadium, especially right field, you're going to give up home runs. I think that's something, as a 26-year-old pitcher, and I know he's been around, that you can improve upon. Well, it is, you know, and it's it's about giving up the solo shots. You go back to Catfish Hunter, who was sort of famous for that. Uh, you know, when men on, with men on base, he would make sure that he, you know, he, he found the corners or, you know, he, all of his home runs were solo. You know, that that's really the key for Hughes is to be able to make pitches with men on base, men in scoring position, stay away from the multi-home runs. You know, the sort of two-run and three-run shots. Not to belabor it, Michael, but, you know, over the last two years, only Irvin Santana has given up more home runs, 45. Phil has given up 42. At some point, you look at that. I and mean, you all evolved. David, I'm sure you evolved as a pitcher. You look within that nuance of, like, how do I improve on this? You know, even though solo home runs, they could be losses. We talked about it last night. Snap throw to first, diving back is Ackley. You know, with a great matchup in Felix Hernandez and CC Sabathia, solo home run could be a loss. Most nights it's not. It was great that the Yankees came back. The pitch count was up on Felix Hernandez. Had a little back issue. The Yankees came back and snatched the win. The 1 0. David, is there any way that he could change being a fly ball pitcher? Or is that just what he is? That's his repertoire. It's, it's what he is. And. You know, the problem with fly balls, obviously, is, you know, some of those leave the ballpark. So it's really about not only how many fly balls he gives up, but the percentage of home runs off of all those fly balls. And that ratio can change year to year, and that's something he can get better at. 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball strike. You know, I still think the key with Hughes is, is what he's done so well lately is figuring out that breaking ball repertoire. He's mixed the slider back into the mix. He throws it to both sides of the plate. You know, when he first came up, he had the big knuckle curve ball. He's ne you know, his changeup has always been third or fourth best pitch. But that pitch right there, that slider, that comes in on the same plane as his fastball. And that can be very effective. And that's the pitch that turned around his season this year as opposed to his first couple of starts when he really didn't have a feel for that slider. You know, it's a good question, Michael, but I, I, I say this, that every player evolves. You make adjustments. And just to say, oh, well, I'm a fly ball pitcher, I hear you. But at some point, you take inventory. You say, well, okay, well, how do I improve on that? How many of these solo home runs, or in the case in Kansas City, the Yankees scored a lot of runs, he gave up six, but they win, cost me wins and losses? Or does it enable me to get into six, seven innings to start and not wear out a bullpen where they have to get 12 outs a night? One, two. Two and two. Now Phil started off shaky this year, and, and you know no one wants to make excuses, but he had one. He didn't pitch much in spring training because of the back issue, and you could see as he's got more innings up here, he's become a better pitcher. And although he took a little bit of a step back against KC, look at the last five starts: two and oh, three point two one, so much better than the first two. When you look at the Yankee record, 25 and 14, they don't score a lot of runs. Let's be honest. You look at the stats, they just don't. They're doing this because of their pitching. Starters and bullpen have been outstanding. That's why they're 25 and 14. Yeah, their bullpen hasn't given up a run in the last 24, two third innings, only 10 hits. And as a staff, seven of eight in the last wins. That one's lined into center field. It's a base hit. Ackley is going to round second. He's going to third. The throw to third. It gets away from David Adams. So Ackley is in there, aggressive, and ran on the arm of Gardner. Gardner hit Gonzalez. Gonzalez threw to Adams. You know, I, I, I'd like to see that if this was offline, Alberto Gonzalez, the shortstop for the Yankees, he, he cut that ball. You, you're cut. Now, this is a beautiful angle here. This looks like it was right in line. If you see that direct throw, I don't know whether David Adams, the third baseman, had called cut or not. 
by cutting the ball may have cost them getting out of third base. All right, so runners on first and third, one out. Early problems for Hughes, and, and that'll bring up Kendrys Morales. Late on that pitch and grounds it foul. Take a look at the Yankee defense behind Phil Hughes. In the outfield, it's Granderson in left, Gardner in center, and each row in right. Infield, David Adams, his first big league start on his 26th birthday, first big league game. Gonzalez at short, Cano at second, Overbay at first, Chris Stewart behind the plate, and Phil Hughes is on the mound. Morales lines one into left. Granderson slipped. The ball falls in front of him for a single, and scoring is Ackley. It's 1 0 Seattle. Well, with Granderson slipping, didn't have a shot of catching this ball. Fastball, you see the location. Phil Hughes wanted that ball inside. Chris Stewart was setting up inside. Kendra Morales just pushes a nice little line drive to left field. See, Grandy slipping right there. I believe he would have caught it. I think with Ackley's speed, probably would have scored. We'll never know. That slip, he makes sure that he catches the ball. Tough break for the Yanks. There's Michael Morse. What? And there's a strike. You know, looking at this Seattle Mariner team, and they're offensively, they're they went out and got Michael Morse, who had a monster year a couple of years ago with the Washington Nationals, 31 home runs. They just haven't been able to get it going this year. They're basically last in almost every category. Ground ball right side through for base hit. Seeger rounds third. They're sending him home. The throw from Ichiro is not in time. It gets past Hughes. Both runners move up, and it's 2 0 Seattle. Well, Morris shoots it to right. Ichiro looks like he's got a shot. And it looks like a decent throw. A little bit of a short hop, though. It's hard to time that hop. You know, most outfielders can't throw it there all the way in the air. And to get that perfect hop, you almost have to land it a little shorter than that. And that's a tough play for Chris Stewart. And probably was going to be too late anyway. Hughes needs to be further back to back that up. See that on the Mercedes-Benz Yesmo. Brought to you by your Mercedes-Benz Tri-State dealer. No hesitation. That scored a single, an RBI, and the runners move up on the throwing error by each of them. So Larry Rothschild goes out and has a talk. So early problems for Phil Hughes. Here's Justin Smoke. One and oh. Just looking at this early on, I've mentioned about the Seattle offense, 14th, second to last in average, second to last in hits, second to last in on base percentage. The ball right now for Phil Hughes, and you talked about it, Michael, up in the zone, they've all been fastballs. And when you have to do what he just did right there to Justin Smoke, guy about 235, he went curveball, curveball, 2 0 pitch, changeup. You know, immediately you're scrambling. You know that feeling, David. Or maybe, maybe not. I felt it more than you did. Where you just first inning, you're now going to Plan B or C. And he walked him on four pitches to load the bases. Tonight's closed captioning brought to you by Lexus. Will that send Rothschild to the phone? They're facing a pitcher with a very low ERA. 1.74. Don't want to fall too far behind. Lowry has not reached for the phone to this point. Now here's Raul Ibanez, a two run home run yesterday. At that time, gave the Mariners a 3 0 lead. 
0-1. Ibanez, last 10 games here at the stadium, including the playoffs, he has seven home runs. <laughs> Drive right center. Gardner back track wall. See a grand slam for Ibanez, and just like that, the Mariners lead six nothing. Got to give credit to Abanjas. Hughes really struggling. Throws the curveball. It's up, out over the plate, and Abanjas seems to know it right off the bat. Montero takes his life of a starting pitcher. You wait all week to pitch, and in 15 minutes, maybe a little less, your week is ruined. Six to nothing. Montero with a single up the middle. Crowd getting a little restless. And still no one up in the Yankee bullpen. So this is updating the numbers I just gave you. Last seven games at the stadium, including the postseason, nine home runs and 18 runs batted in. A little more than 12 minutes into the game, you're on the horn. Here's Brendan Ryan. Yeah, you know, I'm watching him and I've, I've been there. Right. Just bad first inning, and you're right. 10 minutes, 12 minutes, you get your warm ups, whatever that is 40, 50, 60 throws down there. You come down, towel down, national anthem, and you know, boom, 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 get the first guy out, Saunders, and just a line of bad results. And I say plan B or C, and I know, I know you've done it because you, you know, you improvise, I guess, but when you're primarily a predominant fastball pitcher, like Phil is. Fastball, fastball gets a lot of outs, elevates, you know, sneaky fast, I would say, at that 92, 93. And then put away with either slider. Slider's his best strike pitch, I think, secondary. But when you get that feeling of emergency, of having to go to your third and fourth pitch right away, you know, it's just, a, it's just an uncomfortable feeling. It's an uncomfortable feeling to be warming up this early. It's Claiborne out there. Preston Claiborne has pitched great for the Yankees, but in more high leverage situations than coming in in the first inning. Sky the other way. Foul ball. This is a manager's nightmare to have to go into the bullpen in the first inning. Well, Al, you know, we've all been there. I've certainly been there. You know, it, this is this happens to starting pitchers once or twice a season where you just get blown out in the first inning. And the ninth batter is up right now, and you've got one out. Ground ball is short. There's one. That's all they'll get. So now two outs and back to the top of the lineup. Let's look at the game time weather presented by Bigelow T. 65 degrees high humidity 11 miles per hour. It's uh, partly cloudy, but there is clearing in the forecast. Saunders let out the game with a fly ball left. And then the bottom drop. There's a strike. <laughs> Thank you. 
the 0 1. Line drive right field. Ichiro on the run. He can't get there. It gets past him and it rolls to the wall. Ryan speeding around third. He will score. It's an RBI double for Saunders, and the carnage continues. It's 7 0 Seattle. And that's going to do it. Phil uses night ends in a hurry. He did not get out of the first inning. He leaves trailing 7 0 as Yanks go to the pen. Pen brought to you by AT&T a call that no manager wants to make now he's got to get 25 outs out of the bullpen today Preston Claiborne will try to get a couple of innings four games so far in his big league career he has no ERA he's been impressive pounds the zone and he's going to face Dustin Ackley Ackley started this all with a walk with one out Right. And as Michael said, you know, as you see Ackley walked and scored in his first plate appearance. Claiborne is more of a short reliever. So it would be interesting to see, you know, how much you can get out of him. And of course, the doubleheader in Cleveland the other day kind of Nuno had to be sent out after that game, and Warren had to go four innings as well. So. Not the best of timing for the Yankee bullpen to have to get this many outs. Well, and then you throw in Brett Marshall, who's also up in this Yankee bullpen. So you have three rookies. One and two. One two pitch strike three Ackley down looking and that is going to do it With seven runs on six hits a rough start for Phil Hughes this was the big blow his former teammate Raul Ibanez with a grand slam Seattle seven Yankees coming back.
the Yankees starting lineup that's going to try to do it. It's presented by Lexus. Brett Gardner in center field will lead off. Robinson Cano at second will bat second. Vernon Wells at DH hits third. Cleaning up left field of Curtis Granderson. Lyle Overbay at first base bat fifth. Batting sixth, making his major league debut, third baseman David Adams. Ichiro Suzuki in right field will bat seventh. Batting eighth and catching Chris Stewart and Alberto Gonzalez. The shortstop will bat ninth. And they got a tough customer they have to face. They do, Michael. Hisashi Iwakuma, the 32-year-old right-hander from Japan. Spent 11 years in Japan. It's Major League Baseball, their equivalent, 107 wins over there. You see the great ERA of 174. This guy is tough to hit. The 30 hits to the 51 and two-third innings. Very good. Let's take a look at the scout report. Brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. High chase rate. This tells you a lot about his stuff. 35% of his pitches out of zone, swing and miss. Best in baseball. Major League average is 26.8%. Good split. He's got a very good split finger down and into the righty, down away the, uh, to the left-hander. Fastball about 93 slider. And you see Felix Clay and Hisashi. That's a Midtown law firm. You know what it is, David? Three top ERAs in the American League. Felix Hernandez we saw last night. Clay Buckholz. And this man right here. Iwakuma with a 174. You ever deal with that? That firm? What? That firm? What do they specialize in? Low runs. <laughs> or no runs. What? Those are the top five in American League earn run average. Verlander fourth. Annabal Sanchez fifth. At this point, he's turning out to be worth the money that the Tigers spent on him. Games like these, and David, you were in the dugout. Joe Torre used to say, just chip away, don't get it back all at once. And you know, you've got nine innings, certainly not an insurmountable lead. It's going to be tough. We're not kidding anybody, but just chip away, Torre used to say. But it's certainly from the offensive end when you're out there playing defense at the top of the first and you watch seven runs being scored you know you're on your heels you know, it's so deflating you get back in the dugout and every, everything's dead so that is the worst of scenarios but there is time as Michael said and that's what Tory would have said and I'm sure that's what Girardi and the coaches on the bench are saying you have got a lot of at bats try to just Get a picket fence going. Score one this inning. You know, just chip. You know, that's what chip away means. Is get a little something going. Put a little pressure. Let's see how close we can come back. See how close we can get to coming back in this game. Swing and a miss. Gardner down on strikes. That's that split finger right there. Late movement. Good action. Do a cover. What? There's a split finger. David Cohn, you know a little something about split finger. See a little hesitation, and then the full extension right out of the kick. Hard to time. You see, you got a little hesitation and a little herky jerky movement with that leg kick. And that's part of the deception as well. That hesitation typical of many of the Japanese pitchers that come over here. Start, and almost stop. There. Cano takes the strike. Cano delivered the big blow in last night's 4 3 Yankee win. Yankees trailing 3 to 1. He picks up a double in the right center field gap to tie the game. And he eventually scored on overbay sack fly. One and one. Such a good hitter, Robbie. Watching that at bat last night against Charlie Furbush, a left-handed pitcher. Times it looks like he baits the pitcher into sitting on certain pitches. That's that swing and miss, the chase out of the zone. He threw more of a split, not a fourth ball, right? Yeah, more of a split. Yeah, the difference is, is obviously how wide you split your fingers. The wider you split your fingers, the more rotation is taken off the ball and the bigger the break. That's that's the beauty of a split finger fastball. That's why it's not a changeup. It's a split finger fastball. It actually has a little rotation on it. 
So hitters still kind of read fastball and then just dives down and out of the zone. Tough pitch throw. I, I couldn't throw it. I just didn't feel right. Tough pitch on the elbow, tough pitch on the arm. Yeah, a lot of people thought it was a tougher pitch on the elbow. Going back to the late 80s, you know, when Roger Craig was the manager and, uh, of the San Francisco Giants and it's sort of the, the teacher of the split finger. But his theory was don't split them too wide. The elbow problems come when you split your fingers too wide and that puts more pressure on your elbow. If you just get outside the seams with your splitter, off of the seams, and it's not too wide of a split, then it takes a little less, you know, it's a little less stressful on your on your elbow. Grounded to short. Ryan gets Cano. He's in no hurry to get the first base for the second out. You know, you guys talking about the chip away. I think often, you know, the feeling of trying to hit the seven home, seven run home run, and the idea of, you know, deep counts, you know, even if it's a seven eight pitch at bat, even if you end up making an out or obviously base runners and keep the line moving, the throw away at bats is try to stay away from. Vernon Wells swings and misses. Wells has great numbers against the Mariner right-hander. In five at bats, he has four hits, including a home run. Wells the DH again. There was some fear that. After Travis Hafner had the MRI, that there could be something really wrong with his shoulder, but they said it was just inflammation and he could play any day. So it's not a long term thing. It's good. The 1 2. That one's driven deep to left field. There it goes. See ya. He's now 5 for 6. With two home runs. And it's his 10th home run of the year. The Yankees are on the board. So the first piece of wood on the picket fence is up on the board. But what a time Vernon Wells has had since his uh, short stint with the Yankees. His 10th home run of the year, 23 RBIs, two sliders in a row. The previous one, he swung at a pitch out of the zone. Iwakuma middle of the plate down her way short quick stroke you talk about how hot Verna Wells has been his last eight games over 400 batting average feeling locked in at the plate Verna Wells Granderson grounds one up the middle for a base hit that's his first hit of the year first game back yesterday he was 0 for 3 but he picks up a single with two outs here in the first. Wells just cuts him off. Iwakuma tries to get that slider down and away. And Vernon Wells with the bat head out in front just beat him to that spot. He kept it fair right down the line. Talking about that previous one. That was in the left handed batter's box. Here's Lyle Overbay. Want to know? Another guy. What a job he's done. Red Sox get rid of him. Comes for a couple days of spring training. The Yankees had to make a decision. It was really the thought was more of a defensive minded sign. He's been offensive. Look at that. First right handed pitchers. Count 
top two and one. It just seems like some guys, you know, they, they find themselves always coming up with the game on the line. So far this year, it's been over Bay. And you look at his overall numbers, although they're good against right handed pitching. You know, the rest of the numbers, you know, other than the six home runs, sort of, you know, middle of the road. But he has just had a knack for Johnny on the spot coming through in the clutch so far this year. Sometimes, you know, in Iwakuma's case, oh, yeah, you got seven runs yeah. to work with. Well, you had a long wait to get out there to pitch your bottom of the first. Some some pitchers have a hard time pitching with that kind of lead. 2-2. Two -two. Oh, nice diving stop by Smoke. Took an extra base hit away from Overbay for the final out. But the Yankees get one run back. Vernon Wells. His 10th home run of the year, second home run against Iwakuma, and 7 1 as we go to the second. One more game against Seattle. That's uh, tomorrow night at 7.05 right here on Yes. Then the uh, struggling Blue Jays come to town. Friday night's on my nine. Then Saturday and Sunday at 105. Both games on Yes. The Yankees hit the road. Three games in Baltimore. 7.05 starts. Thursday's an off day. And then St. Pete against the Rays. Three games there. What? There's a strike to Kyle Seeger. Very strange positioning <laughs> with the camera. Almost a, a human camera stand. Better than a tripod. The 0 1 is lined right at Overbay. One out. Perfect position. While Overbay, no, it's just play and catch. That's the ball coming in, a little downward movement. Well, Claiborne was impressive in spring training to me, Al. I mean, he's got a. That, was, that last fastball was up to 95. He can get mid 90s with his fastball. I thought he was one of the surprises of spring training. I really liked his stuff, and he, he sort of pitched himself on the radar. And really has. A good presence on the mound. They've done well since he's been up. Squib down the third baseline foul. And the Yankees really do have some depth, particularly in the bullpen down in Triple A. Clay Claiborne has been, you know, obviously uh, the one that, that got the nod, but uh, there's some other really good arms. Montgomery down there is a strikeout pitcher and prospect coming up. So on the pitching side, some good depth in the Yankee organization. You know, I was I was reading uh, some of the quotes. I think it was either in Kansas City 
of Adam Warren talking about how David Phelps was kind of the inspiration for a lot of the young Yankee farmhands that you could actually help this team. I think that was something along his line. And you know, historically, the Yankees have always had, you know, powerhouse players, all star at every position. And now, as a result of these injuries, you know, these minor leaguers in the system, they're getting a chance. And, and you know, here's a perfect example. David, you're so right. I mean, with Preston Claiborne, he got his opportunity to impress in spring training, Joe Girardi and the coaching staff. And here he is. He's a 25 year old pitcher. And he's getting a shot. Sometimes you only get one. And I just thought, you know, obviously thinking internally, there's a resume from Preston. From Preston. 17th round out of Tulane University back in 2010. Swing and a miss. Two outs. And now whether it's by default or not, it's the reality. And you get a chance with some of these injuries. Great changeup. So now he's showing 93 plus velocity and nice little 83 mile an hour changeup. Had a nice spring. You know, he had an 0.84 ERA in 10 and two thirds innings in the spring. So that kind of uh, announced his presence. And so he was the first one to, to get called up. Not just a little uh, Polaroid anymore. They can send him right away, right? Is that yeah. what he's doing? The, uh, the internet. We're very lucky that Al Gore invented the internet. Things really changed. Can I okay? <laughs> <laughs> the Ocho <laughs> driven out to right field, backing up his Ichiro He's on the track and makes the play. We're going to revive lighter as we go to the bottom of the seven, second inning. It's Mariners seven, Yankees one. to make it a point to walk around get myself accustomed with the clubhouse and then walk out on the field I mean just look around just picture yourself picture all the fans in the in the stadium uh, so that way when the game starts I'm ready to go he's ready to go and he is going to lead off this inning this is his birthday turned 26 years old and he's making his major league debut let's take a look at the Jeep hitter scouting report well he is destined to be here I mean he was placed on waivers off of the 40 man roster to make room for Vernon Wells the Yankees were then able to re-sign him after three days after clearing those waivers and even way back he was part of the proposed trade to Seattle for Cliff Lee back in the day so he could have been playing third base for Seattle the Yankees could have lost him that's what you call destined to be here and uh, down and dirty following the 2012 season he was the first ever recipient of the Trenton Thunder Dirtiest Uniform Award. Right back to Iwakuma. 
and the key for him is to stay on the field. You know, the thing that derailed him was injuries. You know, he had some ankle problems, a uh, fractured ankle and some back spasms. But he's a career 295 hitter in the minor leagues, and, you know, he earned his way here. I think a lot of Yankee fans are excited to see a young prospect brought up through the Yankee organization get a chance to play third base every day. To make room on the roster for Adams, the Yankees release Chris Nelson. And Nelson actually picked up two hits yesterday, so these young Yankee players and he's not that young, but they're gonna worry about doing well. Vidal Nuno, five shut out innings first major league when he got sent down, and Chris Nelson two hits and he got released, but that one is driven deep to center field by Ichiro. Saunders back. To a, I think, David, that what the Yankee front office is doing is they're trying to plug holes and they're trying to put spackle up there. I think they've done a great job and they react to the day. And, and uh, I think they should be celebrated for what they've done. Well, yeah, without a doubt. And I think in David Adams' case, he would have been here sooner, but the fact that he was taken off the 40 man roster and had to go through waivers during spring training disallowed him from being called up until today May 15th and that's the rules of the 40 man roster and we can get into more of that in a little bit the difference between the 25 man roster and the 40 man roster and so some of the rules get a little complicated you know throughout the organization once you have a minor league player for three years then you either have to put him on the 40 man roster or he can be exposed to other teams through the rule five draft. So it just keeps teams from stockpiling and sitting on players in your minor league system. And you can protect 15 of them, put those extra 15 guys on the 40 man roster, and then the rest of your minor league guys can't get sat on. You know, after three years of service in the minor leagues, you can go somewhere else and play if you're, if you're a, a shortstop behind Derek Jeter so you don't get stuffed for 15 years. Boy, and that happened a lot in the 40s and 50s when teams had 12 minor league teams. And you know, if you were in the Yankee minor league system, you might not ever see daylight, and they owned you forever. And it happened on every team. 60s and 70s, Michael, until the reserve clause and Kirk Flood. That's exactly when when these rules came about. And uh, so what they what each major league team has is 40 roster spots to protect your talent, and the rest of them at some point can be exposed to go somewhere else. Swing and a miss. Chris Stewart goes down on strikes. And he is tagged out by Montero. And that'll do it. Yankees go down in order one, two, three. And we go to the third, seven, one M's. for live baseball everywhere you go. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry 10. At-Bat delivers Yankees baseball with live audio 
pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. Text it back to 31826 or visit yankees.com for details. Lincoln scoreboard 7-1. Mariners lead the Yankees. And Justin Smoke leads off against Preston Claiborne. That's like his second full inning of work. He came on to get the final out of the first, and then he worked a 1 2 3 second. And there's a base hit for Justin Smoke. We talk about David Adams. The irony of the trade of Cliff Lee that eventually went to Texas. The Rangers included that man right there, Justin Smoke. And that was apparently the difference. And if David Adams hadn't have broken his ankle sliding into second base in Double A Trenton in May of 2010, Cliff Lee may have been a Yankee. And the Yankees might have gone to the World Series rather than the Texas Rangers. That that might have been the difference in the American League champion that year. And the Yankees, after the Mariners said, well, Adams' ankle is bad, the Yankees said, well, then take Eduardo Nunez. And uh, Seattle said, no, we didn't want him. And they took Justin Smoke, who was you know, one of the top prospects in baseball at the time. And the Rangers felt that Lee was that important, and he turned out to be. Also included in that deal was supposed to be Montero, it was supposed to be Montero, Adams, and another minor leaguer. But those were the main names. So the Yankees were willing to give up their best prospect, Montero, and Adams, who was highly thought of, for Cliff Lee, but it didn't work out. The 0 2 to Ibanez. Fly ball left field. Granderson makes the play. You know, I know you touched on it last inning with 40 man roster, protected players, etc. You know, it's becoming more apparent to me, and I don't, I'm curious of your opinion, with when you look at teams that what they're doing with player development scouting, and even now with the injuries as a result, the Yankees are getting an opportunity to show and use their young players. There's the next Yankee farmhand in the trade. To Seattle for Pineda, who's who got hurt. But you know what? I, I think, David, when you look at teams like what the Orioles did, the A's last year coming back from behind, winning the West, lower payroll, player development, <laughs> prudent scouting. It's important. You know, it's not about the highest payroll. Anymore. Another, Marshall warming up. Yeah, another one of those young Yankee pitchers that's going to get a look tonight as well. There's, there's no doubt about it Al because it, obviously we're in an information age and most major league teams are run with all sources all sources of data medical data payroll data you can compare long term contracts free agency signings how they work out what are the odds of them working out and puts more emphasis on efficiency of your farm system rounded the third Adams with the long throw gets Montero and a smoke moves the second. Adams could play third, short, and second. Well, he played third in college, and when the Yankees drafted him, they thought of him as more of a second baseman. But right there showing the arm strength, he does have the arm strength to throw it across the diamond. Just get his feet underneath him. Nice, easy, smooth throw. He was the third baseman, as I said, at UVA. So run around second, two outs. Here's Brendan Ryan. Another factor in, what? in what we're talking here is you know player development scouting. You mentioned about prudent free agent signs. You know how far you go, how many years, etc. But the slot money now for the draft. Is also important and key. You know, you just can't sign a, a college kid or a high school kid for any amount of. 
Grounded to first, grabbed there by Overbay. Flips to Claiborne, and that will do it. No runs to hit, no errors on one man left. Two more shutout innings for Preston Claiborne. Actually, two and a third. So we go to the bottom of the third, 7-1. vehicle of the Yankees we started the conversation with this question which is more likely to happen again a 56 game hitting streak or batting 400 for a season one of the replies we got from Yankee classic 46 some guys stay hot all season long but even those guys can have a bad day at the plate a 400 average is more likely I agree I would agree too how about you David very unlikely that's going to happen which one? <laughs> <laughs> Either. Well, that one, I think for sure, the 56. Although I think it's unfair. Uh, they carry the carryover from a previous year. Oh, I don't get that. You have, a, you have a 15 game hitting streak in one year, and it starts all over six months later. Follow Doesn't Yes Network and tweet us your responses using hashtag Yankees Prius to keep the conversation going. Alberto Gonzalez grounds one up the middle. One away. Now, one of the reasons we ask about the 56 game hitting streak today is if this is the day it began in 1941. During the 56 game streak, he hit 408. Not too bad. Now, with all that being said, I didn't think Don Drysdale's record of scoreless innings would ever be broken. Oral Hershiser broke that one with. Six straight shutouts at the end of the 1988 season. So Lincoln scoreboard 7 1 Seattle. What? There's a strike. Well, reason why much harder today with special relievers, you know. Starters once once they get to 100 pitches, here comes a guy throwing 95 and then Mixing and matching closers that throw 95 much harder. And I wonder how many different pitchers Joe DiMaggio faced during that streak as compared to projection wise what he would face today trying to do that in today's game. That's, to your point. Probably not much more than the 56, right? Didn't everybody start complete games? Grounded to first and through for a base hit, so Gardner picks up one out single. In the 41 season, DiMaggio won the MVP over Ted Williams, who actually hit 406 for the season. Joe didn't have a bad year either. 357, 30 homers, 125 ribbies. Was that the year that he did? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, he... Ted was not well, well liked by the media. I was going to say that's that. the problem because if you go to sabermetrics, Ted Williams had the better year, right. depending right. on whether you you know you believe in war or not. But higher on base percentage, obviously hitting 400, but DiMaggio 
such a class act. And then, of course, that 56-game hitting streak and the mystique of that carried a lot of weight in the media and the votes. And one thing I want to clear up, okay, I misspoke. I, I, I had said, actually misspoke was the right way to say it. I had said that the Yankees had offered Nunez and the Adams deal for Lee. It was the other way around where the, where the, the Mariners wanted Nunez instead of David Adams. And the Yankees said, no, you can't have Nunez, and that's what killed the deal. So I want to make that clear. Cano with a high fly ball to center field. Saunders puts it away as Gardner scoots back. Chikani Wakuma here. This is a, a fairly well hit fly ball. He looks down, takes a little peek. Okay, he's got it. Like, no concern. Does he drop it? Does he not? Look at this. Didn't even. Okay, he caught it. Up immediately when he hit it, I said, Iwakuma didn't think that was a home run. He put his head down like he thought it was. Here's a guy who did hit a home run, Vernon Wells, in the first inning. Gardner goes. And the throw to second. Not in time that gets away, but Gardner stays put. Montero has trouble throwing out runners. 18 attempted steals. He's caught one. You got to take the chance. You know, Gardner, a good jump. Montero rushes the throw and one hops it. But talking about that picket fence, trying to get in position to score another run here. Yankees now six runs down, and it was a, a good pitch to throw. But Montero had a little trouble getting it out of his glove. He's not happy with that effort. But Gardner did have an excellent jump. 78th game at catcher. He's played 160 with Seattle. Now we know the numbers on Montero. They know the numbers on Montero. But when you're seven one down, you're going to steal. You better make it. You There's better no make way it. that you can get thrown out when you're down by six. Well, the flip side of that is you, you got to push the system. You got to try to get a run here with two outs and Vernon Wells up and. You know, you're six runs down. If you can get another run here, another run in the next inning, or the two innings down, next thing you know, you get within that three run period to where, you know, a home run can tie you back up later in the game. One one inside two and one. Yeah, I'm with you, David. But as Michael said, you're down by six. You better get there. You get thrown out and end an inning. Sort of a new school, old school theory. You're seeing more and more teams take chances when they're down by these many runs, especially if running is part of your game. It certainly is for Gardner. Grounded to third. Seeger across the diamond, and that will do it. No runs to hit, no errors, and one man left. We're going to the fourth, 7-1 Seattle.
Let's call 1-866-NY-QUITS for free help today. Aside from Ichiro, the 2001 Mariners had three players who would later play in the postseason with the Yankees. Can you name them? Hmm. We will find out in the bottom of the inning. New pitcher for the Yankees. He's making his major league debut. So two players for the Yankees in this game making their major league debut. David Adams and now this young man, Brett Marshall. And his heart must be beating about a mile a minute. That's his resume. Sixth round pick by the Yankees in 2008. Joining us in the booth for this inning to give us a lot of information and also to separate separate me from Al Leiter, <laughs> it's Meredith Morakovitz. Hey, Meredith. Hi. No easy task because Al likes you so much. He just wants to be close to you. He's only human. The first pitch to Saunders is low and away. There she is. There she is. All right, so we got some information to get from you, Meredith. First of all, with David Adams, you know, we mentioned that almost trade with Cliff Lee. Is that something that's still brought up to David Adams? You know what? It's funny. He said people actually still come up to him to this day on the street and say, hey, what went on with that trade? We could have had Cliff Lee. But he said, for me, it doesn't really mean anything to me. It's more the media and it's more other people. For me, trades kind of fall through the cracks and they get broken up all the time. Uh, it's something that went on behind the scenes. I really had nothing to do with it. And that's the way he's looking at it, saying, hey, I'm here now. That's all that matters. I'm happy and I'm happy to be here. And uh, it's funny. He told me that he called his wife to say hey I'm getting called up and she's pretty up on the social media thing so she had been reading on Twitter hey David Adams is set to be called up soon but he knows nothing is definite until they call you into the office and say head to New York so he waited it out Dave Miley called him into his office while the team was on the road and said you need to get to New York as soon as possible now they actually had a 1030 game this morning so he was up awfully early a long day for him but certainly an exciting one long time coming and ended it with saying I told my wife she didn't have to get me anything for my birthday. And I said, you don't even want to hit for your birthday? And he said, well, I have to get myself that. And it is his 26th birthday. So what a thrill for him to be called up on his birthday. And what a thrill for this young man, Brett Marshall. It's a 3-2 count on Michael Saunders and the right-handed deals. And that one's driven out to left center. Long run for Gardner, but he'll make the play for the first out. We mentioned um, the half news yesterday in MRI, just inflammation there. That's about as good a news as the Yankees could have hoped for. And that's exactly what Joe Girardi said after the game. They weren't overly concerned, but with his injury history, they felt like, hey, just have him go and get it checked out. We don't want this to escalate into something more where we're losing him for a week to two weeks to who knows how long, as opposed to just a couple days. So he actually did have a cortisone injection, so that'll take a couple days to kind of set in. And today he iced it, had some treatment on it, but he believes he's going to be a player for this team within the next couple days. So Joe Girardi will stay away from him this evening, but tomorrow we'll check in with Travis Hafner to see whether or not he's able to go and at least be a late uh, late game pinch hitter. The 0-1 is outside. You know, I was watching the BP show and you had an interview with Vernon Wells. I mean, there's so many new faces on this team. Nobody on the team really knows everybody. It's funny because there are so many young guys, so many guys. That Great had, play by Alberto Gonzalez, a retired athlete. So many guys that had come in late in spring training. They're all kind of getting to know each other, and they're meshing together well. But on any given night, you don't know who's going to step up for this team. So I did play a little game, Do You Know Your 2013 New York Yankees? And he got some of them right. Uh, the obvious ones about Derek Jeter and Mariano Rivera. But some of the younger guys, I said, who wears number 43? And he just looked at me a little bit like a deer in headlights, like, ah, I'm not sure exactly who that is. I don't want to make anyone upset. But he did get it right eventually in Adam Warren, a guy who picked up his first major league win and his first save all within the matter of a week. All right, so Granderson's the first injured guy back. What's the timetable on Teixeira? Time will tell. He said that he hopes to be back in early June, but you look at the facts and he hasn't taken live BP yet. He's still hitting in a cage, and although he's showing progress, they're going to continue to take it slow with that wrist. Until he starts taking live BP and gets in some simulated games, I don't think you really know or can set a timetable for Mark Teixeira. And with a wrist injury like that, you have to be oh so careful knowing that if you push it too far or you go with too much too soon, you could be looking at losing him uh, for the entire season. So still some time for Mark Teixeira. 3-0 count on Kyle Seeger. Two outs here on the top of the fourth, and the pitch is high, so there's a walk. You know, I try to do uh, the roster game in my head, and, you know, everybody says it's a good problem to have, you know, too many players. But if and when Teixeira comes back, and Alan and David talked about this earlier, 
boy, Lyle Overbay has done a great job for this team. But I don't know how Lyle Overbay stays on the team when Teixeira gets back because all Lyle Overbay can do is play first base and DH. And look, it's going to be tough. There's no question about it. And Joe Girardi will be the first guy to tell you, hey, I'm not going to talk about those types of decisions. I'm not going to get into it until that time comes. So much can happen between now and then. And Lyle, Lyle Overbay said last night after the game, look, I'd be crazy if I told you I don't think about it. It's one of those things that's impossible not to keep in the back of your head. At the same time, he realizes it's not anything that he can control. The only thing he can control is going out there, having good at-bats and playing a good first base. So he's going to let the front office worry about that, let Joe Girardi worry about that, and see how things shake out. He did mention, hey, stranger things have happened to me in the past, but does believe it all is going to work itself out in due time. So he continues to play a good first base. And if you told uh, the New York Yankees that he was going to step in, yes, they thought he would be a good defender, but he's driven in 24 runs so far this season, including a huge sack fly that scored the go-ahead run last night. He's had some clutch hits for this team, something that I don't necessarily know that the Yankees Expected. And Meredith, he's in better shape than he was when the Red Sox let him go with three days left in spring training because he's putting numbers up. And let's say the Yankees can't use him. Brian Cashman could trade him now. He's he's actually somebody that could bring somebody back. A hundred percent, and I think that's part of it. And you look at these guys that that are piecing it together for the Yankees right now. They know that they've been around the game long enough to know that there is life after the New York Yankees in the event that it doesn't work out here. And it's that much more motivation uh, to not only play well to try to stick with this team. There may be a numbers game with some guys where that's not possible. The better they play here, the more valuable they are to another organization. Kendris Morales fires across the diamond. Good stuff, Meredith. We will see you on the post game. No runs, no hits, no errors, one man left. Brett Marshall with a scoreless first inning in the majors. Smokers quick line quiz. Aside from Ichiro, the 2011 Mariners had three players who would later play in the postseason with the Yankees. Can you name them? I got maybe Freddy Garcia would be one. That's a good one. Jeff Nelson, Olerud, and Olerud. I would not have gotten Nelson because back, yeah, back and forth. Back. Granderson picked up eight in the first inning. Yankees trail seven to one. If you tuned in late, Phil Hughes got the start for the Yankees and really got hammered. In two thirds of an inning, he gave up six hits and seven runs. His worst outing of the year. Put the Yankees in an immediate hole. The one one. Grounded up the middle, but Ryan had him play beautifully. And he takes away a base hit for the first out.
Ryan is known for his range. Widely considered maybe the rangiest shortstops in the big leagues, but some of these defensive metrics that the teams use nowadays might have to be adjusted because of all these shifts. So many, so much more that we see of shortstops playing behind second base, even to the right side of second base. And I imagine Granderson's going to see those kind of shifts too, because especially this ballpark, you know, he's looking to pull the ball. And the pitch to Ober Bay is a strike. You know, listening to uh, Meredith last inning, Michael, that's a great problem to have. Now, Lyle Ober Bay, how he's playing here and the Yankee mystique and the tradition and the winning, you know, it can resurrect guys when they're kind of semi scuffling through the latter part of their career. Allen is drilled to right field and it's off the wall and it gets past Morse. As Overbay will go to second, missed a home run by just a little bit. Yeah, by that much. You know, Michael, I mean, Lyle Overbay, great guy, character guy, and that's what Brian Cashman's brought in with guys like Vernon Wells and, and Lyle Overbay. Not only just good players, and they're just emerging, really, as key hits. I mean, Lyle Overbay got the game winning line drive shot to center field last night. Beautiful swing. Let's see how far he misses this home run. Wow, a couple feet. But what a problem and you know how often do you see the 25 man roster it never stays the same and even right up to the point whatever whenever that day will be when to share is ready. There, there always seems to be a way to figure it out. And I hear what you're saying Michael how do you fit him in if a guy's doing as well as he is you figure it out. Here's David Adams. Now I hear what you're saying about that. And by the way, Overbay has 33 hits, 17 for extra bases. But there are some things that are hard to figure out. When Overbay, I don't know if you can carry a guy on the bench when you have Hafner, a left-handed bat that can only play first base. I, I don't think that's figurable. Well, I mean, do do you flip a coin? Ground it over the mound. Ryan. For the second out as Overbay moves to third. Oh, you mean flip a coin no, between I, Hafner and, and Overbay? Well, you have two similar. I mean, I know Hafner's got way more, way more pop, you know, consistent home run power. Well, you, you have to make sure that Hafner is healthy. And if he is, I think you stay with him. Well, you, you're still going to need insurance. It's not as if, you know, the minute Teixeira comes back, you have to make a decision because you're still, you want to make sure that he's okay. And he may get injured again. Of course, same with Hafner. He's going to need some insurance because of his. History of injuries, so it's not as if all of a sudden you have to make a quick decision. Overbay has earned his keep. He's going to stay around, certainly as insurance for a while. Now, Michael, you're right. On down the line, at some point, a decision is probably going to have to be made, but not necessarily when Teixeira comes back. Well, I, I'll take the guy that can play both sides of the ball, and right now, as as good as Hafner was early on, staying healthy. But you know, basically, Travis is a, is a left-handed DH. Yep, that's all he can play. You know, and then you got Lyle Overbay, you know, good first baseman, could do that as well in DH. For me, right now, I mean, Lyle Overbay is more valuable. But it's a good problem to have, right? I mean, you want every one of your guys on the roster playing like all stars. And I, I don't think that that to share at this point is imminent. I mean, if he hasn't taken live BP yet, they're taking it slow. I mean, they don't want the same thing to happen to Jose Bautista. Well, what happened to Jose Bautista? Came back a little too soon, really hurt the wrist, and he was out for the rest of the year. Hit sharply to second. Right there is Ackley, and that will do it. So the Yankees waste the overbay double. We're going to the fifth inning. 7 1 Seattle on yes.
a bad outing and you hope that he is okay he's such a great pitcher but uh, he leaves that game down eight nothing yeah he's really struggled this year too yeah. david price maybe maybe now you know why maybe something's been kind of nagging him for a while just guessing but that didn't look too good when you come out and take him off the mound there it looked like a real worried face yeah kia scoreboard seven one seattle as we're in the fifth now Sit next to two pitchers. You both had major league debuts, obviously. That's what Brent Marshall's doing right now. What were you feeling the first time you were on the mound? Did you even feel your legs? No. I didn't. Old yeah. Yankee Stadium. It's a blur. It's just so fast. It's a blur. He seems fairly under control. But you can see, you know, 3 0 count. You know, he doesn't quite have the radar yet in, in terms of his command. As he walks, of course. But yeah, you're just so prone to rushing. You're so anxious. Your heart's beating. It's hard to have your body control because pitching is all tempo and rhythm. And when you're this excited and this nervous, it's hard to control that sort of uh, tempo that you need. Now the Yankees could get some distance out of him. He was a starter with Trent Wilkes-Barre. He was two and two with a 4.60 in 31 and a third innings. He struck out 29. He last started on May 7th against Indy. So he is uh, certainly ready to give them innings and if they need it rather than go to the bullpen again. Yeah, he is. He would he would be the guy to get more innings here, Michael. Last year, 158 innings. The year before, 140. And last year he spent with double A Trent now, 13 and 7, 3.52. And in spring training this year with the Yankees, 1 0, 2.84. Gave up four run runs in 12 and a third innings. And he had 11 strikeouts in that time. And Stewart tries to calm him down as he goes 2 0. And we always talk about this when we're down in Tampa doing the games. So many pitchers pitch, they have no chance of making the big league team. But if they pitch well, like Vidal Nuno did, the way Brett Marshall did. Well, when something happens, boom, they'll come right up. Preston Claiborne. Preston Claiborne. So you might not be pitching to make the team on April 1st, but you're pitching to be one of the first guys called up if something happens. No question about it. That's your, that's your, and most players know. They, they even, you know, the mighty Yanks where you look around, you see there aren't spots really to be had. That's your chance. You're in front of the big league coaching staff. Scouts, your general manager, facing big league hitters. Interesting arm action, David, from Brett. A little bit of a kind of a three quarter sling, and his action looks like every ball almost looks like a little, a mild cutter. It's spinning a little bit of a, a cut fastball. Two two. Swing and a miss. Good change up there. Wow, that looks good. If O'Neill was here, that would be up here. But David Coney threw a perfect game. I but David doesn't ask for this stuff. O'Neill makes it very clear that he needs to eat every inning. And he does. And he's in the best shape of anybody I've seen. <laughs> A 32 inch waist at 50 years old. Breaking ball strike to Raul Ibanez. The high metabolism guy, Al. Just burns it. O'Neill just eats anything he wants and just burns it right off. It's kind of sad. Oh, and two. It's that little cutter you're yep. talking about, Al, right there at 91 miles an hour. You know, there's a difference between what Mariano does and guys that actually cut the ball, and I think what Brett Marshall has shown. You know, this is just his natural arm slot to watch this little cut here. You see the setting up away, Chris Stewart was. Although maybe not. That had a little sinking action. So he's got a little four seam that cuts and the two seam that will sink away from the left end. How old were you in your uh, debut? Mid 20s, 24, 24 years old. So you don't remember. Not exactly. 
I remember it was 1986. So yeah, that's 24. The O2. You were 21, right? That's 21. As we're walking across the bullpen at left field, Yankee Stadium, and Mark Connor was the old pitching coach. And I, you mentioned about the legs. I remember I couldn't feel my legs on the mound when I got there. I was just so nervous. And you, you said it, David. You, everything is going so fast, speeding up, trying to throw at 105 miles an hour. But there's sometimes you get so nervous that your legs do feel heavy. heavy. You just feel like you, you have concrete shoes on. I've certainly felt that a few times in my career. But it looks like Marshall's starting to set, settle down right here. He's starting to get a little better feel and release point. Ibanez hits one deep to left. Going back is Granderson. That's gone. A two run home run for Ibanez. He's got six ribbies on the night. And Seattle leads nine to one. Power the other way. Three home runs in two games for Ibanez. Wow, what a night for Raul Ibanez. Coming in to tonight's game, he's batting 211 with four home runs. Not now. Six home runs now on the season. Fastball away. Now, it, last night, CC left the fastball up and in, and he's so good at hooking baseballs to right field. He went the other way with that. Wow, that's strength and also good hitting. Really good play coverage. The ball might have been even off the plate. Granderson, for a minute, thought maybe he had a chance and ran out of room. Six RBIs. That twice. Fastball away. Marshall's hoping. That sinker up in the zone. The guy's hot, staying on the ball tonight. Raul Banya is not hit like a 211 hitter. Count three and two to Montero. Grounded to short. Backhanded by Gonzalez. And the second out. Well, that two run home run to big. You know, add on for, for Seattle. It gives the Yankees a whole different perspective. You know, as a, we talked about the comeback and the picket fence, and your five runs down, maybe you can get a couple more runs and get within that three run home run range. Now, Abanez just extending that lead, to, you know, just making the degree of difficulty on this comeback that much tougher at this point. Rounded to third, backhanded by Adams. A long throw, he gets Ryan. That's a nice play by the rookie in his major league debut. But Seattle scores two runs on another Ibanez home run. We are halfway through 9 1 Seattle.
take on the Blue Jays. It's cap day. All guests in attendance receive a Yankees cap courtesy of Hess. For tickets, log on to Yankees.com. Visit the stadium ticket window, Yankees Clubhouse Shops, or you may call Ticketmaster at 877-469-9849. So Iwakuma has a 9-1 lead on the Kia scoreboard as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Stewart, Gonzalez, and Gardner, 8-9-1. And, and Stewart hits one deep to left field. There it goes. See ya. Home run, Chris Stewart. Mariners 9, Yankees 2. Chris Stewart gets his third home run on the year. First pitch fastball, middle in. Veteran hitter. Catcher knows what to look for in a big lead. That's when you cheat a little bit. You start your swing a little soon, look for that first pitch fastball, and you run into one. That's smart hitting. You know, the double edged sword on, on both sides here. The Yankee hitters trying to chip away. I know, David, you've been talking about that. You know, how you can stay into at bats and just keep trying to get runs. And then on the other side, as the pitcher, you're up by. Eight runs. You don't want to get in the count like this. Started off a little breaking ball to Alberto Gonzalez and then a fastball away. You don't want to walk them. You want to make guys earn it to get on base. It was almost a, a period where you just kind of forget to pitch in the sense of using all of your repertoire. You know, often you'll hear coaches say pitching to the scoreboard or guys that do pitch to the scoreboard sometimes will burn you. Gonzalez with a big hit. Maintain, David. Did you pitch the same way? I For tried the most to, part. Yeah, I tried to just stay into my game. So your games, in the Laredo slider, you'll still throw yeah. behind the count. Early in the count, you might change a little bit and try to get a little more of the plate, like Iwakuma did there with Stewart. But for the most part, you, you don't want to get distracted. Learning how to pitch with a lead, you're right, can be you know, sort of an acquired ability. You don't want to just get out of your game and start yep. throwing fastballs down the middle every pitch, obviously. So you still want to have a feel for your overall game, but at the same time, you're going to pick your situations where you're you're going to pitch backwards or you're going to mix in your off-speed pitches. You, you are going to throw probably more fastballs. Gardner takes low. David, I had always heard that one of the best to ever pitch with a big lead was David Wells. Was that true? If so, why? Yeah, that was the thing with David Wells is he had such good control. You know, he never pitched himself into trouble in terms of walks or deep counts. He just kept pounding the strike zone. Count two and oh. David Wells for a left-handed pitcher probably had one of the best fastballs to right-handed hitters on the inside corner. He would just pound right-handed hitters inside for strikes. And then just off the plate, and there was a formula that really served him well, especially against right handed hitters as a left handed pitcher. Grounded to third. There's one on the first double play. They doubled up the speedy Gardner. Two outs. Wow, surprising as quickly as Gardner is. I thought Kyle Seeger was a little bit deliberate here, making sure that he gets a good throw over to Dustin Ackley. The transfer was okay. Bang, bang. Here are the Mercedes Benz Yesmo. Ooh. Ooh. No one argued. Back to that tie, Michael. Greg Gibson with the call. Ooh. You're a pitcher, you've got to love it. Seeger has now turned 25 double plays from third base. Ground ball to second. And Cano is out, and that will do it. Yankees get a run on the Stewart Homer. 
As we go to the six, nine, two, Seattle. Have to miss a game again now that you can watch live Yes Network Yankees games on your PCs or laptops with Optimum Online. Get a full season of live Yankees games on the go for just $29.99. And if you're an Optimum customer who watches Yes on Optimum TV, go to yesnetwork.com to get more information and subscribe now. Top of the order for Seattle is Michael Saunders will lead off. And a strike, one more. Kind of been one of those nights for starting pitchers around the league, Michael. And Toronto jumped on San Francisco again tonight. It's now 10 to 1 up there in Toronto. Second night in a row. They jumped all over Barry Zito last night. And Ryan Vogelsong gave up a bunch early, like six runs in the first inning. Yeah, Zito got hit around pretty hard last night. In Toronto, two nights in a row. Got the offense working and knocking out starters. And of course, we saw what happened with David Price. He gave up eight runs. And see there, Toronto, 10 runs there in the fifth inning. Saunders walks now. We, we saw that Price did exit. Uh, maybe you guys who've lived this, they say that he left with left triceps tightness. What does that mean? Well, triceps, you know, generally leads to maybe a little elbow. It could just be muscular, but if there's a sort of a, a pathway, it would be to the elbow rather than the shoulder. And that's the area right above the elbow? Yeah, triceps in the back of the arm. Do you ever have that? Never had any triceps uh, problems. Mine was always front of deltoid or shoulder biceps tendonitis. I don't know, Michael. My triceps never hurt. It was either inside elbow or just the shoulder. There's a base hit up the middle by Dustin Ackley. Speaking of injuries, the injury report brought to you by Montefiore Medical Center Inspired Medicine. Those are the guys that are on the DL. Java Chamberlain is actually here. He pitched yesterday, but there's still no word on when he'll be activated. Kevin Euclid is doing some tea and toss. Not something you do in England, but he hits off a tee. Uh, and he hopes to take batting practice soon. And then Travis Hafner day to day with a right shoulder issue. Not a cortisone shot. Now, our good friend Buster only tweeted out triceps tightness is the reason why David Price was pulled the raise announced and they wrote not good. Seeger 
fouls it back and out of play. We saw the look on David Price's face, you know, and I, you, I've seen that look a lot. I've yeah. had that look on my face when I was injured, and you just see the worry, you know, on his face, and uh, kind of tells the story. Well, he he hasn't pitched nearly as well as he did with his Cy Young year last year. Uh, it makes me wonder how long has this been a lingering problem. That one gets by Stewart as the runners will move up. Marshall struggling here. It looks like off speed, like he wants to throw a changeup, but just holds on to it too long and kind of yanks it down and in. Stewart anticipating away has to go all the way across the plate to try to snag that. He's at the infield back. They'll let a run score with the ground ball. Count two and one. That one is driven deep to right center. Gardner turns. Look, see it. Deep into the Yankee bullpen, a 3 1 home run by Seeger. And now it's 12 2 Seattle. And Larry Rothschild wants to talk it over with the youngster. Well, Kyle Seeger getting into this. Fifth home run on the year. Little looked like a fastball that cut middle of the plate in a bad count. Brett Marshall was a 2 1 fastball down. Most every left handed hitter I know likes that ball down and in. Looked more middle deep in the Yankee bullpen. Not what Brett Marshall had hoped for in a debut. Sager been one of the bright spots in the Seattle offense this year. Pretty consistent. Got a couple fans right there. Seattle has been playing much better as of late. You know, we noticed noted that last night on our scouting report. You see the Yankees 12 runs allowed to season high. The last I think five series or six series, they're four and oh, I think, with two ties. After starting out the season, you know, I think one and five in, in terms of series outcomes. The 12 runs for Seattle is kind yeah. of a week and a half output. They're just not a high scoring team. They get by on pitching. But they've certainly done the job. Seven runs off Phil Hughes in the first inning, and that set the tone. Grounded to Cano. He gets in front of it. And he gets Morales for the first out. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the New York Yankees and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. Morris grounds one to third. Adams gobbles it up. In the second out. You know, overall, Al, you know, in spring training, you know, when we do our predictions, and see Tony Pena calling on the phone down to the bullpen. I really thought Seattle would be a lot better this year. I really did. I like the moves they made. Kendrys Morales brought in. Michael Morse. You know, I, I like some of their young guys. Saunders looks like a real good player. And of course, Sager's had a good start. I think uh, Dustin Ackley, they've, they've counted on to, to, you know, with his speed to kind of come on a little bit this year. And a little bit of a slow start for him as well. But it looked to me like the moves they were making, you know, were in the right direction. And they still might be. 
know, they get this win tonight. They're just two games under 500, right? You know, you, you stay around 500, and then you get a hot streak going, and some of the some of the offense starts to kick in. You know, they've got a chance to stay in the race. I, obviously, the big offseason move, or one of the big signs, was go ahead and sign Felix Hernandez after all the trade talk. He gave him the big contract to send a statement. And smoke, smoke's one the left for base hit. And certainly, smoke a big part of that. Kind of waiting for him to come on. All of that, you know, his prospect status. And he's got the talent, big guy, got some power. So they're kind of waiting, you know, yep. waiting in Seattle for some of these guys to, to to get more at bats to find out, you know, if they're going to make it or not, and then add some veterans. And of course, here's one of the veterans they added. What a return to New York he has had. Nine home runs in his last 11 games at the stadium. Fly ball left side Adams in foul territory makes the play. He's made all the plays that have come his way for the final out. Three more runs for Seattle on the three run home run by Seeger and it's all Mariners. Yes, is brought to you in part by the Kia Optimal Limited Mid-Size Sedan, Elegance Performance Technology, by Avis, and by New Kickstart by Mountain Dew. Kickstart your day. It opened up in 2009, christened with a world championship, and it's on the corner of 161st and River Avenue. That's where we are, Yankee Stadium, as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. It's 12-2. Seattle all over the Yankees. Here's Vernon Wells. And there's a strike. Wells with a home run in the first inning and then grounded to third in the third. Wells with 10 home runs already. It'll be Wells, Granderson, and Overbay. Swing. The Yankees came in with a two game lead over Baltimore tonight in tonight's game. Baltimore lost. Freddie Garcia, the ex Yankee, took the loss down there. The Padres beat him this afternoon. Manny Machado, four for five today, Al. What a start yeah. he's off to. He's now batting 343. So Baltimore, wow. Buck Walter just continues there for real. A lot of people thought last year was a bit of an aberration. They made it to the playoffs. It's not. Didn't make a whole lot of moves. Buck trusted his his roster. Thought maybe they'd add a bat or two. Yankees are going to be in Baltimore next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Check swing. He did not go. Two and two. 
And all three of those games start at seven. And we'll have them all. Two on yes and one on my nine. That one's laced in the left center. Saunders got a good jump and runs it down for the first out. At just enough hang time. Vernon Wells gave it a ride. Just got underneath it just a little bit. A little split changeup from Iwakuma. Watch where Saunders is set up. Slightly right center, a little bit right side of second base. Nice little stride. Good pitch. Look at this ball down and in. Jesus Montero he thought that ball was going to be in the dirt. Anderson fouls away. Our good friend Lee Mazzilli, who now works in the Yankee front office, was very proud today as he's walking through the press area. Congratulations go out to his daughters, Lacey, who graduated from UConn, and Jenna, who got a master's degree from Manhattanville. So, an impressive sure. weekend for the Mazzilli girls, and congratulations to them. I know Lee is very proud, and Danny as well. Yeah, Danny gets the credit on that. <laughs> the great Mazzo. It's nice. Yeah, Lee's wife, Danny, just one of the one of the really nice baseball wives over the years. You know, the kind of wife that would take care of the rookie wives, and just great to be around. And real, real warm person. And really to put up with Nassau. <laughs> Swing and a miss as Granderson down on strikes. Hey, we have a new uh, member of the Yes family. Mally McGann. That's longtime Cameron Matt McGann's baby. Born on May 12th, 6 pounds, 15 ounces. Born on Mother's Day. So congratulations. Nice smile. Yeah, to the right. McGann family. Beautiful. Nice name, Mally. Here's Overbay. Doubled off the right center field wall in the fourth. He's one for two. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. And before the Yankees even got to the plate, they were down 7 nothing as Phil Hughes was knocked out after two thirds of an inning. Didn't have great command of any of his pitches. Really had nothing to go to. And Seattle batted around before the Yankees then turned to Preston Claiborne. The 2-0. 3-0. The 3 1. Grounded up the middle and through. Another base hit for Overbay. Well, later tonight, from celebrity cook to talk show host to household name, Rachel Ray sits down for a new GMC Presents Center Stage with Michael K. Find out what's cooking with Rachel on a new Center Stage tonight after the post game. Only on Yes. Impressive life story on that lady. Works hard and certainly been uber successful. It's a good show. I like it. Here's David Adams looking for his first big league hit. He's 0 for 2 in his major league debut. At Triple A, Scranton Wilkesbury hit 316 with 10 extra base hits. 
three home runs. Last year at Double A Trenton, 306 with 31 extra bases. It's got some pop. Third round draft pick for the Yankees in 2008 out of the University of Virginia. First player in franchise history to make their major league debut on the birthday. Pretty cool, though. Come on, get a pitch here. Drive it. Good chance to get a knock. Well, it really has been from bottom to top for David Adams when he was released in spring training, as we said, to make room for Vernon Wells on the roster and then re signed and now finds himself. Starting at third base on his birthday. And there it is. There's his first major league hit. Happy birthday, David Adams. They'll get that baseball for him for sure as the Yankees have runners on first and second. And they throw the ball toward the Yankee dugout. And that's going to go on somebody's mantle. Never forget that moment. First big league hit. Got a nice pitch to drive. On his birthday. Stevie Donahue, one of the trainers, he usually right up on the ball. This moment will be forever frozen. Solid swing, hands inside the ball. Quick little stroke, too. Line drive bullet, first major league hit. And as we said, he's a career 295 hitter in the minor leagues. That's what got him here. Rounded softly to second. And that's going to do it here in the six. No runs, two hits, no errors, two men left. David Adams has his first big league hit, but it's a 12 2 Seattle lead.
BIOS Quantum Internet, technology that makes you feel superhuman. That's powerful. Aaron Harang will get the start for Seattle, 1 and 4, 7.30. Oh, he'll go up against the veteran, Andy Pettit, 4 and 2, with a 3.83. Our coverage on Yes will begin at 6, of course, with the batting practice show. 6.30 is the pregame, 7.07 first pitch. And there is the oldest starter in baseball, 40 year old Andy Pettit. Still and getting it done. Looks like he's going to be pitching in uh, the rubber game of this three game set. A lot of changes. Almost feel like we're at Steinbrenner Field. You can mark them down. Ground ball by Montero. Fielded deep by Adams, and he's got a good arm. And he fires to Stewart. We move from behind the plate to first base. So Stewart's at first. Nix is taking over for Cano. Granderson moved from left to center. Francisco takes over for Granderson. Romine goes behind the plate, and I think that's pretty much it. And there's Stewart, sporting a first baseman's mitt. Cadillac scoreboard, it's 12 2 Seattle. That one is drilled to left field. That's a foul ball. You know, David, last inning you were talking about the surprise of the Seattle Mariners, and I'm with you. I, I, I think some of their moves, the offensive moves especially, you mentioned about the big long-term contract of Felix Hernandez, bringing in Kendrews Morales a couple years ago. You remember with Anaheim, he was solid. 300 hitter. Trade away Jason Vargas. But looking at that matchup tomorrow against Andy Pettit, you know, it always comes down to pitching. Love their one two. Iwakuma's legit with Felix. Drops off from there. Joe Saunders at 5 5 ERA tomorrow. Harangue 7.3 ERA. Good bullpen. And I think what they're really, the, the long term look, they have a couple guys in the, in the minor leagues. Tyon Walker, right hander, big right hander, and, and Danny Holtzen, who also was at UVA, drafted a couple years ago, high draft pick first round. Kind of grooming those young arms to fit in with now Iwakuma and King Felix. Fly ball left field. Francisco makes the play. That was one of the reasons that Felix Hernandez decided to sign that long term deal because the Mariner minor league system really has some unbelievable prospects. And we talk about Montero behind the plate, and I guess they don't believe in him as a catcher because they also know they have a kid named Mike Zunino. Um, who was their top pick last year, third pick in the draft, and he is on the fast track. He can catch, he can hit, and he's their catcher of the future. Yeah. University of Florida Gator. Yeah, they, they, he's top across, not only in the Mariner minor leagues, Michael, but across the game. And yeah, you know that development within. Saunders scalds one to left, and it's going to be played off the wall by Ben Francisco. And Saunders is in second with a double. Well, no doubt Seattle's closer than they're being given credit for. You know, if just a, some of these guys, even in this lineup, to start picking it up. Saunders looks like a keeper, obviously, and establishing himself. But, you know, when you look at their pitching overall, you know, 62% of all their starts are quality starts from their rotation. And that's second only to Detroit. Detroit has a 70% ratio. So they're looking to win another series here. They win tonight, then tomorrow is the rubber game, and you know, they creep in around 500. You get around 500, and you get some more offensive production because, as we've noted throughout throughout our scout reports, is that they're down at the bottom in the league in offensive production across the board, and you got to figure that's going to level off. Just the law of averages, regression to the mean. These guys are going to produce more. And I know that's one of your favorite stats, Al, is quality starts. And, no, it's not. Well, you know what? I, 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 and I know we talked about it before the game. I, I, I just think there needs to be tweaking. To say you go six innings, three runs, and have a four or five ERA, to me, that's not quality. If I had a year where my ERA was 4.5, that would be a disappointing year. Somewhere, I don't know where these stats come about. I know Jerome Holtzman, the old time writer from Chicago, came up with the saves idea. Another guy out of, out of Detroit, you know, these writers come up with. Ideas for stats. John Lowe. Was it John Lowe? Yep. John Lowe came just, up with a quality story. Well, tweak it. I just, I don't know how you feel, but a four five. How about five. three runs and seven? I'm good with that. And make it special. You mentioned 62%.
make it so that when we hear a guy and he says, out of 34 starts, nine of them were quality, we know that that was special as opposed to a four and a half ERA. Right. I think your, your problem is with the name, the quality, the quality, behind, you know, in front of the starts. But if you think about it, across the league, the league average for all the pitching staffs in the American League is just 52 percent are labeled quality starts out of all the starts that are made in the American League. So that's about half. So it's it's a qualifier, but I know what you're saying. The quality it's too part. high. That number, if that's what it is at at four and a half runs or 4.5 ERA for a starter, to me it shouldn't be 52 percent. We should look at that stat and say, okay, 30 percent, whatever the number is, but seven innings, Michael, and three runs or less, that's a 3.8 something ERA. I'm good with that. Well, to your to your point, as you see. With the Mariners there and the number, they, that could be part of, uh, you know, Seager's family. Probably a pretty, pretty safe guess, huh? I would think. Maybe mom and dad? All right, so the Yankee notes, David, they have a good, good note here. Yankee stars have combined to collect 16 starts this season with seven innings, Michael, or three runs or less. That to me is impressive. Right. Now you're only in need of a, of a setup guy, usually a guy that could interchange as a closer, and then you're your closer. So you're looking at six outs as, as opposed to nine. Ground ball to second. Nix is there, and that'll do it. So Al, you'd be happy if it was called an okay start, not quality. Good. All okay right. start and then quality seven innings, three runs or less. No runs to hit, no errors, and two men left at the end of six and a half. Time for the seventh inning stretch here in the stadium is the Mariners 12, the Yankees two, but We'll stay right here to honor America in the Bronx. Please rise and remove your caps. And please direct your attention to the area behind home plate. And welcome two honored guests of New York Yankees. United States Army Sergeant Alfonso Matos Mason, who served in Operation Iraqi Freedom and is a Purple Heart recipient. And United States Army National Guard Captain Casey Staley who also served in Operation Iraqi Freedom. The Yankees say thank you for your sacrifice and service to our nation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please join in Kate Smith's rendition of God Bless America.
in the post game, and they, Al, the the Blue Jays have to start winning at some point. So maybe maybe this is when they break out. Yankees will face them this weekend. Here's the game summary brought to you by your local Nissan dealer. It's been all Mariners since the first inning, as you can see. Banez, grand slam, a two-run home run. Iwakuma has gone six innings, and Wells and Stewart have each had a solo home run for the Yankees. How about this stat from MLB Network that they tweeted out, Al? Ibanez is the oldest player to drive in six or more runs in a game since Barry Bonds did it on July 19th of 2007. Stewart with a high fly ball to center field. And he was one away. Well, you know what? Listen to Nancy and watching that highlight. What's that? Happy 80th? Happy 80th, Mom. I, I still think, Michael, I, I know it's early and the Blue Jays starting out the way they did. This could be what well, this looks like. It's going to be four in a row. That the American League East, it's going to be bunched. I know the Yankees have been very good at 11 games over. Baltimore's were hanging. Looks like the the Red Sox are falling back, especially since their bullpen has gotten injured with Hanrahan and Bailey going down. That was a strength coming out of spring training. Daniel Mark can't throw strikes in the minor leagues. What? And I said this from the beginning. I don't know how you feel, David. I, at the end of the year, conceivably, the last place team in the American League East could be four or five games out from the first place. I think they're going to be punched. 1 1. Gonzalez pops it up. Smoke makes the play. To vote for the Chevy player of the game, visit votechevy.com. Results will be revealed in the post game show. Want to send out our condolences to. Um, the Kansas City Royal family, and I'm sure that um, David grew up listening to this voice. Longtime broadcaster of the Royals, Fred White, passed away today. 25 years in the booth, 40 years with the team, uh, died after a battle with melanoma, and a uh, really nice man. And we send out our condolences to the Royals. Great guy, him and Denny Matthews, the longtime uh, radio voices for the Royals. One of the 73 to 98, Dave. Yes, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, and uh, obviously. Right back to my childhood. You know, I, I was a radio kid listening to the games on radio. And Fred White, a big part of my childhood. Francisco fouls it back. His first at bat today. Miss Francisco down on strikes as the Yankees go down in order. One, two, three. We're going to the eighth. Mariners 12, Yankees 2 on this. The official hybrid truck of the Yankees.
Marshall still in there. Came on in the fourth. This is his fifth what? inning of work. And those could be the Seeger parents. Um, you don't want to uh, predict doom. But this youngster is taking one for the team. And by pitching five or six innings tonight, he's going to be of no use to the Yankees over the next couple of days. The Hyundai scoreboard shows 12-2. He's probably going to be sent out tomorrow so they can get a fresh arm. And that's just the way of the world. It's a tough business as Morales singles up the middle. Yeah, that's exactly right, Michael. That, that's what happens. We know Nuno, who pitched better, similar situation, gets sent down. The rosters, David touched on it earlier the protected players 15 players that aren't on the 25 man active roster can go up and down during the year. And Michael I think you make a good point if he's not able to pitch in the next couple innings that's why you've had Scranton Wilkes Bear a couple hour right away. And in all likelihood if he's healthy enough what they'll do is they'll just move Java into that spot. And uh, that will be the transaction. And they can't bring Nuno back up. Because unless there's an injury, he has to be down at least, I believe, 10 days. And he's scheduled to start doing it was for Scranton on Saturday. Back about 20 years ago, it used to be called the Columbus Shuttle. And the Yankees use that shuttle more or less then for punishment. Now they're using it out of necessity, just mixing and matching, getting people up here that fill slots. Well, there's been a lot of those moments in Columbus this year where the manager goes to a player and says, uh, pull him out of the lineup. <laughs> you're going to the big leagues. And what a moment that is if you're in AAA and, you know, you're in the lineup or you're scheduled to pitch. Or... Morris hits one to right field. It's a base hit. Sometimes even mid-game, Al, they'll pull you right out of the game yeah. and say, oh, yeah, you've you got to get on a flight and go to New York. And that's exactly, David, what they did with Austin Roman. They they. Pulled him out of the behind the plate. He said, I want to finish the game. They said, no, no, you've got to go. That was right after Cervelli broke his uh, finger. And uh, he was in the trainer's room. The call went to Scranton Wilkes-Barre. And all of a sudden, Romine was out of the game. Yeah, especially a catcher. You know, you knowing that you're going to call him up, you got to make sure he stays healthy. And there is Romine going out to talk with Marshall. Well, as bad as this game went for Phil Hughes and for the Yankees so far, it's still a game tomorrow. It only counts as one. Only counts as one, and uh, you know the series is on the line. The rubber game tomorrow night. When you talk about momentum, Seattle's trying to build momentum, quietly building momentum. It's a great night offensively for them, a confidence builder. Probably felt like they should have won last night too. The Yankees caught a break because Felix Hernandez had to come out of that game. So if you're on the Seattle side, you're feeling pretty good about it. You feel like, hey, we should have won last night. We came out tonight. We got 12 runs on the board. Seattle's won nine out of their last 14 games. So they're building momentum. They got to feel pretty good about themselves right now. They're oh. strike to smoke. Three and one. Ground ball to second. Nix goes to second one. On to first. It's a double play. 4 6 3. But Marshall getting a little sinking action. Jason Nix in for Robinson Cano. Nice little spin moves. Strong throw to Alberto Gonzalez. Plenty of time to get Justin Smoke. Nice play. And the value of Jason Nix, you know, plug him in just about yep. anywhere on the infield. Can even play the outfield as well. Pitch outside.
count 2 0. Two and one. Talk about Seattle too. You know the momentum they're building and in that division they play in out there in the West. To me, when you look at Houston, it's already 20 games below 500. They're wow. 10 and 30. That the team in the West that beats up on Houston yep. has got a chance to make hay. Houston just beat the Tigers today. I think the Tigers left the bases loaded and Miguel Cabrera hit one to the wall for the final out in center field. 2-2. Two, two. The struggles of the Los Angeles Angels and the major contracts that they doled out the last couple of years. Albert Pujols, Josh Hamilton. You know, the best hitter on the Los Angeles Angels is playing for the Yankees, Vernon Wells. <laughs> yes. He's got well, Moreno said today, he said, I'm not going to fire Sosa during the season. Ooh. Fly ball left field. Ben Francisco puts it away. No runs, two hits, and one man left on base. We go to the bottom of the eighth. It's 12 to Seattle. in the studio with highlights and analysis of tonight's matchup, including the latest scores from around baseball, plus Meredith Moragovic with the clubhouse reaction. I'm sure it's not going to be pleasant. And Joe Girardi's manager's report. It's the WB Mason postgame. It's only on. Yes, be interesting to hear from Phil Hughes and what went wrong for him when he gave up seven runs in the first inning. This is what happens when if you're over 10 and you eat cotton candy. That's the look that takes place. Have you ever had cotton candy? Yeah. Did you look like? Did your eyes God, I hope bug not. out like that? No, no, I wouldn't do that. Uh -huh. And she's texting. I can't believe he ate cotton candy. Here's Oliver Perez, who has kind of reinvented himself as a reliever. Again, Met fans probably look at these numbers and go, "Really? Yeah. Really? 14 games, 1.26. He, he was such a bust with the Mets." Signed a big money contract, couldn't get people out, but have left hand will travel, and uh, he's really turned himself into a very good reliever. Big difference between the rotation and the bullpen is we've seen a lot of guys kind of revive their career going back to the pen, and as a left-hander with the kind of stuff he's had, it's the 
It's a good fit for him as long as he can get the ball, you know, over the plate. Monday scoreboard 12 2 Mariners. Perez deals to Jason Nix low. Well, sometimes you got to hit lower than low or the rock bottom, rock bottom. Or he was let go by the double A team and for the Nationals in Harrisburg. Mariners took a flyer on him last year. And as you just said, David, I mean, he's, he's touched 95 this year. And the difference between just kind of knowing where you are and who you are, and Michael, you mentioned about that contract that he had with the Mets. He's been doing very well. 94, 95 miles an hour, just coming right at hitters. He had become such an albatross to the Mets that they just said, you, you got to go. Even though they owed him a lot of money, they just could not have him come out. It, the fan base had turned against him. People were angry when he pitched. He just didn't have a chance with, in that kind of atmosphere. And they just said, you got to go. And the Mariners have two players that the Mets said, you got to go. Jason Bay and Oliver Perez. And they both contributed. Robert Andino takes over third. been a reliever your entire career out I know you finished that way with the Yanks could you have thrown consistently harder yes so you did pace yourself starting oh, you had to go seven or eight innings absolutely Michael you know just not that you know I, I've watched Justin Verlander and this guy just purposely 93 ish uh, you know in the beginning of the game and then all of a sudden he pops 97 but you have that ability to just know that you're coming in for an inning or two and empty the tank and if you get adequate rest a day off here or there if you pitch an inning you can do that two or three days in a row hopefully the, you know based on how your offense scores you can automatically have built in a couple days rest we've seen it with with the Yankee guys over over the time you know most obvious recent examples Phil Hughes back in 2009 during their world championship season when he went to the bullpen Regularly 95 as high as 97 miles an hour with his fastball coming in one inning at a time. Just a different mentality. Plus is a different look to would you ever throw it in the pen? I did in the minor leagues, yes. I was a short reliever in the minor leagues and I threw harder for one inning at a time. You break it down just to two pitches, fastball, breaking ball, whatever your second pitch is, and you simplify things and when you come in out of the bullpen like Oliver Perez, you see he is maximum effort. And a lot of the guys that were starters and go to the pen, they can they can do that. They just rear back and throw every pitch with maximum effort and get away with it inning to inning. Do you guys marvel at a starter that can go maximum effort for seven innings? Like sometimes you saw Clemens do that. I, I think even Roger, you know, you know, there's certain guys when you, when you say maximum effort, they just their raw ability takes them to 95 miles an hour just with the smooth arm action and, and that's what they have. Uh, you know I mentioned Verlander. Yeah there's no doubt if, if it is max effort that Nolan Ryan you know 95 mile an hour better. But even those guys Michael. You know I still think there's moments you know Roger when he came up with that split finger. He got a lot of outs you get easy outs on on your secondary pitch especially early in the count. Three one to Wells. Perez walks him. And that's been a problem when we showed his statistics. He had seven walks in 14 innings. You look at Oliver Perez over his over his career, really. I mean, that great year that he had in 07 with the Mets. 15 and 10, ERA respectable 3-5. He just never was able to justify that contract. Granderson grounds the first. There's one on to Perez covering in the dirt as Granderson beats it out. Nice quick little transfer knowing Granderson's getting down the line. You see Brandon Ryan scooting toward third base. Didn't get his full momentum. And nice play by Perez keeping the ball in front of him. And 
Here's Austin Romine, just one hit and 14 at bats since being called up when Cervelli was injured. His first at bat tonight. That one hit that Romine got was a double that drove in Corbin Joseph. Moving to second is Granderson. That's defensive indifference. <laughs> Strike three. Romine down looking. So two strikeouts for Ali Perez. And the Yankees strand one. We're going to the ninth. It's all Seattle. on deck this season there's more fun and games baseball training tips and surprises from your favorite box bombers a new season of yankees on deck is back sunday at noon and again at 5 30 only on yes so we go to the ninth inning and since the first inning it's been all mariners phil hughes two-thirds of an inning gave up seven runs on six hits and I have a trivia question to ask. See if you can get this one, David. Tell me the last Yankee pitcher to pitch fewer than an inning in a start and allow five or more runs. I'll give you a clue. Seven years, uh, eight years ago. And I'll give you another clue, David. He's in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not Michael K. <laughs> it's not me. In the Bronx, in the playground. Yeah, but that's Sarah with a base that, hit to right. But Al was 57 years old when he made that start. So. <laughs> Al went two thirds of an inning against the Oakland A's and gave up five runs. I remember that. That was your third start after coming back. Right? That's right. Yeah, came back to the Yankees 05, Red Sox start in Boston and then uh, had one in Anaheim and then up there in Oakland. Did you start again after that or is that when they put you in the bullpen? I think right after that I went in the bullpen. Uh, and think cause and effect? Probably. <laughs> Two in a row. Joe Torre is like, all right, that's enough. But your your um, your first start ever when you came back yeah. was awesome at Fenway Park. It's good. Had a couple good ones when I came back. Nice way to finish a career. Brendan Ryan grounds one to Adams. He fires to first, the scoop by Stewart, but Ryan beat it out. Boy, you got to be impressed. 
David Adams is playing a pretty good third base, but Ryan just beat it out. Well, he did. It kind of surrounds it down the line, and a nice pick by Stewart. Stewart thinks he gets him here. I think he's right. Ooh. Lucky Brent Ryan didn't break an ankle. Just barely got to the bag. Wow, what do you think? I think it's bang, bang. Well, he, he was running for any kid he could. That was four hits in his last 58 at bats, Brendan Ryan. You know, talking about Hughes and, and, and Al, I mean, some of the best pitchers have those innings. David said he had it. El Duque against the White Sox in 2000 went two thirds of an inning, gave up nine earned runs. Dwight Gooden in 97 against the Twins, two thirds of an inning, gave up six earned runs. It happens once or twice a year. It can happen to almost any starter. Now, Al, you once gave me just operating on the assumption that there are 35 starts. People don't make 35 starts at 33. 34. You said there's a certain. You're going to be great. You're going to be bad in, in the middle. Joe Altabelli told me this when I was in Double A. He was a roving instructor for the Yankees. And I remember him sitting down, sitting down with him. Chavez grounds one to short. There's one. And there's two. You get basically five starts a month. Give or take. Some start some months you get six. And this there is one of those good starts. There you go. First one back. I'll tell you what, that really did make my year. I signed with the Marlins from the Mets. Uh, it was miserable and awful down there. Brian Cashman took a flyer on me. I came up, and uh, that was a good, big moment. Wearing rags is old number, number 19. Yeah, yeah, he's my guy. His mentor took me under his wing when I first got to the big leagues. So Altabelli said, "You out of that, and it makes sense to me. You get five a month. That's 60. Uh, that's 30 starts, right? Over six months. You have two good ones where you basically have your stuff and you win. Another one that you that another two that go either way, either no decision or a loss, and you have a clunker." So you you multiply that over the year. That's a 15 and 11 season, give or take, with those clunkers and the the so-so starts of the five being could go either way. That five and a third where you give up three or four, maybe your offense scores, made complete sense. And it's the way you dismiss games like tonight that you, as you said, David. You know, it's one or two a year. If you're lucky, it's one or two a year. But Altabelli contended that it was six clunkers a year then. Well, right? have, well, yeah, he's saying six starts where, you know, not not at less than an inning. You know, where you go five innings and, you, you know, you're just not good. Four or five runs and you lose the game. You don't deserve a win. I and, just thought it was. Did a, you feel that played out over your career? Uh, you know what? It, it's about a 60 percent kind of deal where you win. You know, if you can win 60 percent of your games, your better years better than that. You're going to have a good season. Yeah. That. <clears throat> this is uh, Girardi's going to come out and make a change and 108 pitches taking one for the team. He might have a position player coming and pitch right now because he's got no one warming up in the bullpen. Yeah there it is who pitched in high school. Well, Ichiro can pitch. Vernon Walls is going to go and play the, the field. And it looks like they're going to have Alberto Gonzalez try to get the final out. So the DH is out of the game. And Alberto Gonzalez will try to get the last out. That kid really took one for the team. Yep. And Brett Marshall, 108 pitches. And smart fans cheering him right now because he saved the Yankees bullpen for tomorrow and this weekend against Toronto. So his major league outing, first one, and he gets some handshakes.
as Alberto Gonzalez deals to Robert Andino. Here in the ninth inning. Those are the numbers on Marshall in his major league debut. First time Gonzalez has ever pitched professionally, as far as we could tell. And the count 2 0. Oh. There's a strike. <laughs> Al, do you have a picture scouting report on uh, Gonzalez? Uh, 78 mile an hour fastball. He got up to 83. Dino waiting him out here. One third of an inning. No runs for Alberto Gonzalez. No runs, two hits, and two men left. He got the pop up, pointed up. There it is. He just said, I got it. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Brought to you in part by your tri-state area Volkswagen dealers. Visit VWDealer.com. By PNC. See your business's cash flow like never before with PNC Cash Flow Insight. And by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. Now he's hanging in there in a 12-2 game. His favorite player is on the DL, but he's watching nonetheless. Pretty little girl enjoying some Yankee Stadium action. He looks like he's probably in his last inning right there, but uh, still here. Holding on to dad's ear. Hoping for a rally here in the bottom of the ninth inning. And they bring in their closer, Tom Wilhelmson. He's a good one. 10 for 10 in saves so far. I should remind all of our viewers this is not a safe situation. Not, not yet. <laughs> well, here's David Adams. His major league debut, one for three. He's made a couple of nice plays at third base as well. And Wilhelmson deals high. 97 miles an hour. Mark may have to say this. What's that? Uh, well, the fact that you said that this is not a safe situation, you have to remind your viewers. Right. I think if a viewer out there would think that this is a safe situation, you might have to explain what a save is. I was, I was being a little tongue in cheek. It's got to be a three run lead or less in the ninth inning. You have to come in with the tying run on deck, or you pitch three innings in the game. The last three innings in the game. Could be somebody come, you know, land from England, watching ball game. Watch cricket and soccer. Could not hold up on that one. 
as Adams goes down on strikes. Hey, you can't say they don't know baseball in England because we saw yesterday Prince Harry had a really nice swing against Mark Teixeira and hit a bullet. Good thing he pulled it, right? Yeah. I mean, that was a bullet. They were at the Harlem RBI situation yesterday, and uh, Prince Harry took a couple of cuts against Mark Teixeira, and he did have a nice swing. Here's Ichiro. Foul ball. And here is Prince Harry's rip. No stride, huh? A little bit of a cricket swing there. It was, right? A little crickety. Definitely. Down to up. To share, huh? With Prince Harry hanging out. Mark is such a gigantic supporter of, of Harlem RBI, not just with his time. He's given a lot of money. I think he gave a million dollars last year to Harlem RBI, which is reviving baseball in the inner cities. He's really a big supporter of that cause. And it's also an after school program, so good job by Mark. Right back to Wilhelmson. And the Mariners are an out away. Heading right for a rubber match tomorrow night. Andy Pettit will be on the mound and coming off a good one back in Kansas City after a couple of uh, subpar outings for him. Threw the ball well in Kansas City. And Eric Wedge continuing to try to build momentum in, in the Seattle team. And he'll send Aaron Harang out tomorrow night. And we'll have the game on, yes, we told you, 6 o'clock. The BP show, 6.30 is the pregame show, and there's Harang. 7.07 is the first pitch which will be thrown by Andy Pettit. Count 2-0. and oh. Yankees have two runs. One on a home run by Wells. One on a home run by Chris Stewart. This should do it. Ground ball is short. Ryan and the Mariners win this one 12 to 2. Never in doubt after a seven run first inning. Yankees couldn't really make any headway. And the Mariners win the second game of this three game set. Yankees won last night and as David mentioned the rubber game tomorrow night. This one you just have to shake off and say hey there's another game again. Stick around for the post game show to find out who's tonight's Chevy player of the game. We've got an award to give out and then we'll send it to Nancy and Meredith with the post game show.